Hello Micron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching J Raccoon vs. God on Cataclysm Ridge. Let's get this started. J Raccoon is in the east side of the map, and God is in the southwest side of the map. Both players just getting themselves started, picking their species. J Raccoon is going for Kraken, while God is going for Vekir. So Jericoon normally plays Grekim. God plays everything. I mean, not entirely surprising he's going for Grek for Vekir. And it's not entirely surprising that he's going for an early Q-Plasma RP. It looks like he's going for a Depot Rush. Very common to go for early Q-Plasma and Liquid Crystal. And here we go! There's an early Foundation and that will become a Depot right away. Right on cue. Whereas Jericoon probably going for a more economic start. Not suspecting that there's going to be... Wow, definitely not suspecting there's going to be any... Actually... No, he probably is suspecting a rush. If the Arcticus is going to the back, that's probably to make it a bit harder for God to get units around the back or just skip teleport them around with impunity. I mean, he can still skip teleport them around with relative impunity, but it slightly chokes it out a bit. I don't know, mainly it'd be for vision of the back. That's the main reason to do this. But it does stop units from the front from being stopped. The Arcticus at the front is often used to stop the Triad from being attacked from the front. However, actually, you know what? No, given that Cataclysm Ridge typically has assaults coming in towards this backdoor ramp, this Arctic displacement is probably the best one. Though I'm sure Jericho is planning on getting a reef up here fairly quickly as well, and that will help block off. Now, God, on the other hand, he doesn't care. He was going for... Well, he was going for a particularly offensive or particularly aggressive attack, and now he switched over to Grekum and is moving his Arcticus over to the main ramp. So I don't know what's going on there. I mean, clearly he switched before Jericho and even know, knew what was going on, so it's not like this is a big trick. Jericho never even saw that God was going for Vekir. I guess, I don't know, I guess God just decided he didn't want to play the Vekir early depot rush strategy off, and he didn't. I don't quite understand exactly what he was thinking. Mind you, what he might be doing, and this would be extremely clever, is doing this race switch. So he sets up the orders, he sets up all the construction, and then those orders are more or less followed. I mean, this thing can't really do the same as what the Foundation is doing, so a lot of the orders are junk, but not undoing the orders. So they're still being sent. Then jumping back to this bookmark over here where he switched species in the first place, switching back to Vekir right before he gets the Impaleo Past, and then causing everything to go back to his original strategy, his original Depot Rush strategy, and all the orders will go through, because it'll be the same units and everything. But, it'll be right next to the unplayable past, and so Jericho can't do anything to stop it, and Jericho doesn't even suspect it, because it looks like it's going to be this strategy here, this Grekum economic build. I don't know if God's planning on doing that, but that would be extremely clever if he did. That being said, it doesn't even look like he's actually planning on doing that. That's actually... No, he's not doing that at all. He... The race switch timing just went in the unplayable past, and God did not go back to change that. I... That would've been cool! I just... Like I said, I don't know why he went for that early rush in the first place. But, if someone does do that, that would be really awesome to watch. Like, making full use of the way that order timings can work. That would be just insane. That would be neat. I'd love to see that. Of course, if that's gonna happen, I would and someone sees that game happening, don't tell me that's what happens, because it's funnier, or rather more interesting if it's a surprise. Still, it'd be really cool. Someone did that. I mean, it'd be sneaky. The other person would not expect that. But God was not clearly the thing in that, so both players just going for a standard economic build, and not doing a whole lot other than Akron scouting, and sending a couple Octos to harass a slight amount. Nothing really major, both players are particularly focused on their economies. God a bit more focused on his liquid on his resource his Q plasma resource processors. J Raccoon on the other hand, not actually building as many resource processors, or if he is they're all on liquid crystal. So J Raccoon much more focused on the late game, and I think God is trying to get a very early octopod. We're using this for one pull and then moving it over to the liquid crystal. Because you don't want to be using Q plasma too much unless you were actually wanting to get early tech if you want to get early tech, go for early Q Plasma, and then build up, in Grekin's case, an early Reef, and go from there. Typically, it's not worthwhile, though Cataclysm Ridge being a small map, you could have it pay off. 
going for liquid crystal primarily gets you more money that you need. Like liquid crystal is used for building resource processors, so you're essentially investing in economy directly whenever you build a liquid crystal RP. Whereas a cubeblasm RP is just for tech, so it doesn't actually help you beyond building more tech structures. Useful once you have enough liquid crystal RPs to support your continued expansion and overall unit production, but not at the start. And a couple of reefs being built, or soon to be built for Jericoon, just Seppies now, but they will be reefs, so they jump back about half a minute. And God on the other hand, the Implable Past Edge getting another liquid crystal RP and not removing his Q Plasma RP. He appears to be committing to tech. Though he hasn't built any reefs yet, I'm a little bit suspicious about why he's doing this exactly. But he's not... He's... No, he's not going for it. He's actually just building up more Q-Plasma. Likely to be going for quick advanced structures and chronoporting. Knowing God, he's going to be going for a permaclone strategy. Just trying to make sure his opponent is distracted enough that he can basically permaclone a bunch of Octopods in his base. And then march them forward. Jericoon, there goes. One of his reefs. The other Seppi for a reef being built up here. And a third Seppi as well. So full bubble wrap is going to be built up. Unless Jericho is planning on going for Mound. No, he is not. A full bubble wrap being done. All the reefs in place. And Jericho just actually does have enough for advanced structures if he wanted to. And he's getting Octopod first. Afterwards, probably get advanced structures. The Octopod, not that useful. Neither player really is going for a rush. Both players going for heavily economic strategies. God. Okay, God is definitely going for a permaclone strategy right now. He's got more than enough Q Plasma RPs to make that work. Just needs to wait to get in the money for advanced structures and for chronoporting. I don't see a Seppi though. He seems to be very focused on just getting the early economy for this and not even getting an Octopod. Jericoon's Octopod, however, is stopping God at the 5 minute mark from staying in his base so God can no longer scout. Jericoon jumping back to the 349 mark and not apparently doing too much here. Probably just double checking what was going on. Making sure God was doing anything tricky because God is also at the 4 minute mark and he is keeping his Akron out of trouble. He's just not moving it into Jericoon's base at all. So Jericoon. Not scouting with his acorn anymore, and neither is God. This is we're seeing something before the time waves propagate everything. So this blue time wave will propagate this acorn no longer being in Jericoon's base. We can ignore it safely. But J Raccoon does have advanced structures, and we can't ignore that. This is meaningful. He's gonna be going for a Faro and, and Aspire any minute now. Once this is done, which it is done now, we should be seeing a Faro come up right away. Actually, a little bit surprised it's not coming up quicker. Jericoon possibly doesn't have enough cube plasma to really support that. He doesn't actually have enough cube plasma RPs to support air at this point. God does, but God is not actually. Well, he's just getting an Octo for progeneration. There we go. So now we can get Seppies and Faros, get the Reef, get the advanced structures. Jericoon definitely ahead in tech, God ahead in economy. So it's really a matter of timing it out. And this. Wait. The, no, God actually didn't. He did not retreat his Acron from the looks of it. He's still going for that scouting. He's being quite bold. I'm actually quite surprised he's doing that. That's extremely risky, because if he does that and isn't careful, he could lose his Akron with it the game. But he seems to be fine so far. Seppi being built up for a reef, so God getting a reef about two minutes later than Jericoon did. So like I said, Jericoon does have a tech advantage now, but Jericoon also doesn't have any Spire. He's actually not making any use of the tech advantage at this point. Getting some Octopods, or he was getting Octopods further in the future, but... He doesn't have any Spires or any Faropods. Reef being built up for God at the 6 minute mark and God at the 537 mark. Looks like he's just prepping up, keeping his Akron out of trouble once again. And... What the heck was hitting him? Did Jericoon go in? Yes, he is actually going in! Harassing with an Octopod and dealing quite a bit of damage to the Akron over the cliff, but it's... At this point, there is a Spire being built. God will be able to deal with this and stop it from actually dealing him any real damage. He has an Octopod of his own coming up, he has... Sorry, not an Inspire, a Mound, what am I saying? He has a Mound coming up, so he is able to see Jericoon's Octopod without issue, and Jericoon's Octopod, however, does not have the same vision. It can harass these RPs a bit, which is good, but he does not have any way of dealing with the Akron directly, so God's QP advantage not going to be changed too much. I mean, God has hundreds of hundreds, well, back at his point in time, he has almost 400 QP. Losing one RP on this is not going to be a problem. He can still build up what he wants to for the permacloning. No, maybe not quite permacloning, but he, I mean, he has three other RPs. He's going to have, he's going to be fine. This isn't going to be a big difference to what he can do right now. Jericho, on the other hand, his own base is quite well defended, so God would have a hard time harassing if he tried. 
but Jerrigan's still not going for a Spire. I'm very surprised at this. He's had advanced structures for almost two minutes now. It's 840 mark. Actually, more than two minutes. But he doesn't have a Spire. He's not actually taking advantage of this. Or Dome, or... So he's going to be... Well, he's going to be wasting his money. And with that, he's... Well, he's wasting his time. God, on the other hand, definitely much better prepared for using advanced structures. He's going to be... Well, he gets it. He's getting chronoporting immediately afterwards. He had this in mind, like I said, from the start. And so 730 mark, he is getting chronoporting. Or, no, he jumped back slightly. It's actually 8 minute mark or so he gets chronoporting. Immediately when advanced structures is done. So God is prepared. Jericho, on the other hand, is going for a direct assault. Good idea. This is the best timing to do it since chronoporting is being researched and hasn't actually been researched yet. Like, this is the time when chronoporting is being researched. Very vulnerable. God does not have any money for dealing with this. He only has one octopod. Jerakun, this is the best thing he could do right now. Though I still think he should have built a spire and maybe gone for a farapod instead. But he has these octopods, and this is the only time he has to attack, and this is the perfect time to attack. It's a very good timing on the attack. If Jerakun actually goes for the attack and doesn't just try to proxy here, I think he's just hanging out here. I don't think he's actually committing to an attack. Yes, he is committing to an attack! There we go. Oh, no, wait. That's just getting more units in to reinforce. Now, he needs to commit to an attack right now. This is the time he needs to commit to an attack because God will have chronoporting. He will be able to chronoport back this octopod. He will start being able to... Actually, chronoport anything. Farapod. Spire is being built up, so farapods are likely to be built. And from there, we're going to be seeing chronoported farapods. Chronoported farapods at the five-minute mark. And Jerakun, not quite as prepared there. He still was pretty prepared. I mean, Jerakun clearly has played God before, so he knows what God is up to. It's still going to be scary. There is not much that Jerakun can do at this point. Two Farapods being built up, and Jerakun will need to attack immediately. Or, well, okay, he's actually jumped forward a bit. Jump forward to the 10-minute mark to attack, waiting for his reinforcements, but he actually should be attacking sooner than this. Once this green time comes along, he'll see that he really should have attacked sooner. God jumping back to the 935 mark when his Farapods were being constructed. He knows the attack is happening, he knows it will happen, and these Farapods are definitely here to prepare for it. No detection available either. This is where actually Sippy Pods would be very useful. But there are no Sippy Pods. There are some Faros in the group. Or at least one Faro in the group that was coming down. There are two Faros. And both of those Faros will die within the first five seconds. I guarantee it. The Faros will... Or Faro Pods will likely target them. And there will be no detection. However, on this time wave, there's still actually quite a bit of damage being dealt. God has not chronoported anything back yet. We're at God's point of view at the 944 mark. Right near the Unplayable Past Edge. And God is losing his economy very quickly. Lost a couple of his RPs already, and another one being taken down, but his Farapods are in place, they are cloaked. These Octopods can no longer do any real damage, and the Farapods are coming to assault them. The Octopods really just go for broke, try to deal with damage they can, but even then, they're taking a lot of damage. One of them gone down in 10 seconds, another one going down very soon after. Three Farapods to defend this, and Jerakun has no way of really dealing with this. No way of detecting cloaked. He's gotten rid of three RPs, not really made cost, but still some harassment. God didn't have a whole lot of Lick Crystal in the bank, so this is important. He can't easily rebuild this. And his Q Plasma is also fairly low, so he's dealt a blow. Jerakun has definitely dealt a harassment blow, but it's not going to be quite enough yet. It's still good, but God will be able to rebuild. Jerakun, on the other hand, ahead in economy, well, ahead in his resource processors, but way behind in tech. Doesn't have Corona Porting, doesn't have any Spire. He does have a lot more economy being built, though. Actually, he should be able to afford this. His economy is going to be supercharged after this, but the Faropods here are going to be easily able to destroy him. If God discovers this, which he will, Faropod going to the back. Wow, very nice for God. He must have been aware of this happening in the first place. And Jericho's going to lose this. He's not, going to be able to, he's not going to be able to build this at all. So I don't see that panning out. Well, obviously I don't see it panning out. It's clearly not going to pan out. Jericho just has just lost his expansion, and all the money that he's invested into it is going away too. This Farpod in the perfect position, very nice placement by God, and Jerakun trying to come in and deal some more damage from the north, but the Arctic is distracting his troops, and God back at the 1157 mark, attacking Jerakun directly, hitting one of his reefs, so at least that reef has been there as a distraction, quite useful that way. But I don't think God really cares about the northwest expansion, he's clearly, he's actually moved his Farpod away from there, as we can see further back. He's aware that it exists, but he's not dealing with it, he's going straight for the main base, Figuring that Jericho has no defenses. Figuring correctly, even though Jericho does have a Spire now, he could get a couple Sepipods, and he does not have those Sepipods. Why does he not have the Sepipods? 
He needs the Sacred Pods and he needs them now, if not sooner. And sooner is no longer an option with the Unplayable Past Edge. And the Akron is having to move away. Jericho moving his Akron out of the way, but being at the Unplayable Past Edge means that. Without Chrono Burn, there's no way of getting out of this, and I think we are done here. J. Raccoon losing his main triad, getting his base pounded into the dust by Pharopods, and there isn't much else happening. God just streaming Pharopods in, and if anything did happen, God could just Chrono Burn back. J. Raccoon has surrendered, and that is the game. So I have another game for you guys shortly, so stay tuned.